Hi, today I want to talk about why I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. And the rapture is when Jesus will call all Christians to meet him in the air before the tribulation begins. The Antichrist is then revealed at the beginning of that time, and Christ will return seven years after that for the after the great tribulation. And you will not want to be here for that. And I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. It fits scripture the best of any of the views, including those who hold there is no rapture. And I'll tell you why. Scripture teaches that God's people will avoid wrath. Not tribulation, but wrath. God's people will avoid the great tribulation. Those who are in Christ now will avoid the great tribulation. And they will avoid God's wrath. Those who are not in Christ will not avoid God's wrath. So look in one reference. I'll give you some references. You can stop the video and look them up when you want. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, chapter 5, verse 9. Another instance of this proof is, And God will wait for his Son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Well, that's 1 Thessalonians 1, 10. For God has not destined us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. Jesus promised to keep the church of Philadelphia from the trial coming to the whole world. And you can find that in Revelation 3, 10. Another one. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming to the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3.10 Another bit of evidence. <clears throat> the word church appears 19 times in the first three chapters of Revelation, but then is absent until chapter 22. And Daniel 9.24 speaks of the 77s to refine and restore Israel, the church, and then the church would be excluded. And of course, people find fault with all Bible doctrines. The rapture is a big target since it will be so dramatic of an event and so hard for us to understand at this point. But one thing I've found is that biblical error always steals glory from God. You can use this test on any Bible doctrine confusion. Does the contention of a doctrine bring more glory to God or not? Is God more glorified if he leaves all Christians to rot in the great tribulation and face his wrath? Would seem not to me. And especially if you've read the whole Bible through, you can see that God definitely does not want to judge a group where there are innocents among them. I was amazed when I read the Bible through of like how patient God really is. And oh well, some people say the rapture is a modern invention. But if you look at Daniel 12 verse 4, you'll see that they're making my argument for me. They're making the pre-tribulation rapture argument for us. And that verse in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 is, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words to seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now's the time when we have rapid travel, planes, trains, and automobiles. No one heard about the rapture until the 1800s. 
And when did mo modern technology start ramping, mo ramping up? The U.S. war between the states, fought in the 1860s during that period, has been called the first modern war. So I think that Bible verse has been fulfilled a long time ago. And it does open the door for belief in a modern end times interpretation. People say it is in the word that Christians will be around to the end. So that disproves the rapture. No, it doesn't. We pre-tribulation rapture adherents agree that Christians will be around to the end. And that is because those who miss the rapture still have a chance to refuse the mark of the beast, refuse the Antichrist, and repent and become a Christian. Not something I'd recommend, but you have to do it to save your soul if you're around in that time. Scripture tells me the rapture is going to be very, very soon. All the signs of the Bible are being fulfilled. Look soon for Damascus to be destroyed. That doesn't need to happen first, but it will be one more Bible prophecy fulfilled when you see it happen. The terrorists and evildoers against Israel are stockpiling weapons there. They keep getting bombed. It's only a matter of time before that city is obliterated. One of the oldest cities in the world prophesied in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, that it will be destroyed. The end times is also um, noted that earthquakes will be in diverse places, which it really is. Every day, dozens and dozens of earthquakes are happening. Wars and rumors of wars, that's going on now. Every continent almost has a some th imminent threatening war going to happen. The difference is now there's enough ma weapons of mass destruction to eliminate large percentage of the people in the globe. Now there's preparations have been made for total control over people through technology. There's rampant crime everywhere. It's not being controlled. And there's people calling good evil and evil good. That was mentioned in the in the Bible and the end times would be like that. No time have we seen that more than now. You're rewarded if you do wrong. You're punished if you try and do right. Called a hater. Everything that's being pushed, it's like they opened the Bible and, see, and looked and see what can we do opposite of the Bible. And that's what's being done. And another thing... Events in Israel is the, the wars going on there, the threats to them. Israel is never going to be defeated completely, never. Even such thing as the, the third temple being readied, the red heifers that are available now for sacrifice there, the perfect red heifers weren't available until now. It's been... Thousands of years they've tried to raise them. And then somebody in Texas raised them and sent them over there. One thing, you may not believe in any of this. You may not believe in the rapture. But one thing you must believe in is Jesus Christ. You must be born again. If you've not given your life to Jesus and trusted him alone for salvation, you're not a true Christian. Your soul is in jeopardy. We are not good enough to go to heaven on our own merit. Heaven is a perfect place with God in it. And he expects everything to be perfect. We are not perfect. Even the very 
what we would consider the very best people. A lot of people that are better than me, better than a lot of Christians, are not Christians because they're not saved as God has demanded in the Bible to get to heaven. You must check this out. You must look it up because Jesus is real. The Bible's real. Heaven and hell are real. You must check it out. Only Jesus can save. Believe on Jesus Christ and do his will. No one who ever does this ever regrets it.